Hey, it's Craig Syracuse and welcome to another episode of Walk in Faith, the show where we go beyond the image and we discover who our guests really are. You might know them from TV, the big screen, or even the world of sports, but do we really know who they are as a person? Do we know what motivates them? Do we know what inspires them? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Filmmaker Patrick Creedon joins us to talk about the life and legacy of Father Ted Hesburgh, who in addition to being the president of Notre Dame, led an influential and fascinating life on a world stage. Stay tuned and walk with us. Well, Patrick, thank you so much. I'm glad we had some time to chat. Yeah, thank As you. As I was saying, you know, I always watch documentaries. That's pretty much what I do is watch documentaries. Loved it, right? But it was during the credits especially, I'm saying to myself, I've never heard of Father Hesburgh, which to me, I work for the church, was I was a little upset about it. Yeah. And in case our viewers aren't familiar with Father Hesburgh, can you fill us in a little bit? I know there's a lot you can talk about, so can you tell us a little sure. bit about who Father Hesburgh was? Sure. He was a Catholic priest. Uh, he was born in 1917 in Syracuse, New York. Uh, he became the president of the University of Notre Dame when he was 35 years old, and he held that position for 35 years. He retired when he was 70. So Father Hesburgh is probably most well known as the president of the University of Notre Dame. However, what many people don't know about him is that he was one of the outstanding leaders of the 20th century. In the mid-50s, he was picked by President Eisenhower to serve on several commissions, one of which was the Commission for Civil Rights. Um, and that was sort of the beginning of his journey of becoming not just a national leader and problem solver, but really a, an international leader and moral authority. And, and now you attended Notre Dame, yep. so I don't believe in coincidence at all. So how did you get involved in this project? I mean, to me, I feel like God was behind the scenes working all along, but tell me how you got involved in this project. Well, as you said, I went to Notre Dame. I graduated uh, a couple of years after Father Ted retired. Um, I knew Father Ted, I knew who he was my whole life. Uh, my father went to Notre Dame, my grandfather went to Notre Dame, so I'm, I'm certainly in the Notre Dame family. So I knew him and I respected him, but at the same time, I, as a documentary filmmaker, I'm a little bit of a skeptic. And I really kind of wanted to see for myself what all the fuss was about. And Father Ted passed away in 2015 at the age of 97 years old. I thought at that time, this is really a moment to kind of revisit his story and find out how exactly he lived the life that he lived and if his life and, and the history of, of his life really kind of lived up to the legend or legacy of his life. <laughs> Oftentimes those two things don't really line up. Um, people's reputations really get um, expanded maybe beyond, beyond belief, if you will. I can tell you, two and a half years into making this film, Father Ted's reputation far exceeds what I thought I knew about him. He was an extraordinary leader. He was smart, he was funny, he was kind. And in his 97 years, he spent his life really trying to make the world a better place. And I think we're all grateful that, that that's what he did. When you decided to do this documentary and you started to tell people that you wanted to do a documentary on Father Hesburg, I mean, especially what's going on in society now or within the church, what were, were people, you know, excited about it? Was there some pushback? Yeah. So I work with my wife. She's my producing partner. How does that work? It's good. It's, it's good. really good. She's my boss, so it works out <laughs> fine. Um, so her name is Christine O'Malley, and we have three daughters. We live in Los Angeles, live and work in Los Angeles. We knew from day one that a movie about Father Hesburgh was a tough sell. This is a Catholic priest who probably did his best work 50 years ago. Um, when you step just outside the Notre Dame community, his name recognition falls off really quickly. But in some ways, those are my favorite kinds of stories to do. I see that as a creative challenge. Let's, let's take this story and figure out a way to tell it, but also figure out a way to bring it to a modern day audience. And I think, you know, I don't know if you feel this way, Greg, but when I look around the country right now, in this moment, I think we have a crisis of leadership. I think regardless of which party you're looking at, or which particular leader you might be looking at. And this is true not only in American politics, I think this is really true in the Catholic Church, if you look at some of the things we've been through of late, you know, lately. Um, I think the world is in desperate need of a different kind of leadership, a leadership that can be honest, um, 
and, and that can have transparency and that can do the right thing and sort of play the long game. And I feel like the, the story of Father Ted really resonates in this moment because I think a lot of us are starting to really lose faith in our institutions and in our leadership. And when you were doing research, I mean, Father Hesburgh, like you mentioned earlier, had, there was so many interesting things about him, so many accolades. Was there one thing that stood out the most, or can you identify one thing, or is it just is yeah. it difficult? I mean, one thing about him is like, he, he loved a good cigar, and he loved a Manhattan at the end of the day. So he, like, he was kind of... He was just kind of cool. It's like a man's like, man. It, totally. <laughs> and he was an adventurer. Um, back in the late 70s, he, um, he went on a top secret mission for President Carter. He was monitoring an election in Central America. Again, kind of something you wouldn't think that a college president would do. This was the kind of thing Father Ted did every day. So he was on a helicopter. He went down to Central America. He monitored an election. He came back and gave uh, President Carter his full report. President Carter was very grateful and he said to him, I really owe you a favor. If there's anything I can do, let me know. Ted said, well, I'm glad you asked. I always wanted to fly on the world's fastest airplane. And President Carter said to him, well, Father Ted, it's not really customary <laughs> for a civilian to fly on a top secret airplane. To which Father Ted looked at him and said, well, I thought you were commander in chief. He ended up flying on oh the SR-71 in what looked like a space suit, kind of a NASA suit. He just was somebody who, who lived life. He lived life with a great hunger and a great sense of adventure and unquestionably a sense of trying to help uh, the least among us. He's really an incredible role model. It's fantastic. And one thing I loved about him, which in the documentary you say that at age six, he knew what his assignment was, he knew what his calling. Yeah. And most people go through life, they don't even realize or, or, or figure out what their assignment is or what their calling in life is. And I, I love that scene in the film. But we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Patrick Creed. So welcome back, Patrick. Thank you so much. We're in a beautiful setting in Manhattan. I love it. It's a beautiful day. So now he was ordained, Father Hesburgh was ordained in 1943, right? So yeah. like we said earlier, in the 40s and the 50s, very different, right? Especially being a priest. Can you compare that, you say, to the 40s and 50s to now being a priest? Well, you know, coming out of World War II, we, we lived in, in the most religious moment in American society. 98% of Americans believed in God. I'm not sure we'll ever get back to that number. So we were at a moment where we were a deeply faithful society. We live in a very different world right now. And I think that, I think that in some ways, part of the reason Father Ted became such an influential figure is that people looked to the church, I think the society as a whole looked to the Catholic Church as a moral authority. I look forward to the day where, where maybe the Catholic Church plays a larger role in society at large. I think right now the Catholic Church is going through a very, very difficult time, obviously, and it's going to be difficult, I think, for the church to really get back to that position it had years ago until it comes out of this moment that it's in right now. Unfortunately, right. And now, when you were doing research on you know, the priesthood, what did you find to be fascinating? And I mean, to be a priest, especially now and even in the 40s, it takes a certain kind of man, you know? Yeah. And I always think about myself. I mean, I'm married with a kid, but I say, can I ever be a priest? Do I have that within me? And when you were doing the research, what was your sort of, what did you walk away from? Is that like, did you learn anything about, you know, the priesthood and what type of man, you know, becomes a priest or the calling? Mm. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think that, I think one thing that's, sort of beautiful about the priesthood is that it's sort of a simple calling in a way. You're called to serve others and you take three vows, poverty, chastity, and obedience, and you're on your way. That's it. It's sort of, um, now now it's, it's, a, it's a huge commitment, it's a lifelong commitment. Um, so I certainly don't mean to make any light of it or make, make it seem like it's not a decision that um, takes a long time to come to. But the point is that Father Ted Hesburgh was really, in some ways, he was kind of a simple man. He had a very deep faith. He was called to serve others, um, and he took those three vows. Um, but I think beyond his priesthood, he had 
he had some really great qualities as an individual. He, he was he was results oriented. He liked to really get the job done. He was fiercely independent. He really just did what he thought was the right thing to do, period. Sometimes that made the church unhappy. Sometimes that made political leaders unhappy. Sometimes that even made his students unhappy at the University of Notre Dame. But he did what he thought was right. And as a leader, I think that's what we want our leaders to do, is to do what they think is the right thing to do. But I think the third most important quality, maybe the defining quality of Father Ted, was that he was a kind man. And that kindness was at the heart of every decision he ever made. It was at the heart of every interaction he ever had, whether it was a president or a pope or a student or um, someone who was cleaning the floors in the library, you name it. He had a common touch with people. And I think in, in some ways that was maybe kind of his superpower, if you yeah. will. That made him the effective leader that he became, I think. Yeah, no, I agree. I think I would say he's holy. Well, he was a holy man yeah yeah because he didn't live two lives like what you saw that was him like you said he was the way he would treat somebody who cleaned Absolutely. the floors versus you know maybe the, somebody that worked in notre dame i think you make a really good point about two lives i think that what we're seeing i think we are living in a moment where a lot of our leaders on the community level on the state level on the national level a lot of our leaders and influencers in the world we're finding out that they live two lives and there's something very disappointing about that. Um, I don't expect anyone to be perfect. I expect people to be honest. Yes. And I expect people to be transparent. And if they're not up to that task, they shouldn't be leading. Father Ted had that. He, he was honest, he was transparent. He was very self-deprecating, by the way. Um, he was the first to admit that he was flawed. <laughs> but we have somehow gotten into this Alice in Wonderland moment where people um, they say things, they don't necessarily do those things. Um, and I can tell you, you know, I have three daughters, they're 17, 15, and 12. Um, they're a lot, that generation is a lot smarter yes. than people give them credit for. And they are, they are profoundly disappointed and dismayed at what we, the, their parents and older generation, what we um, point to as our leadership in society. I think we have to bring those things together because I really think that the issues that we're facing right now are really daunting, whether it's the church or, or in, in political life or in, in our society, whatever those challenges may be. We cannot have a group of leaders that are fighting with each other all the time. Right. Father Ted would not stand for that. He would look for common ground. He would get people together, probably on a fishing boat, <laughs> uh, maybe with a glass, of, a glass of beer or a glass of wine or a Manhattan, and he would create an atmosphere where people could get to know each other and get to trust each other. And that was when the problem solving would begin. We got to get back to that. You're right. And now he became president of Notre Dame. How long after he was ordained, would you say? Uh, so 43, he was ordained. He became president in 52. So I want to say nine years. nine years. When Father Hesburgh got the assignment to be president of Notre Dame, what was the school like when he started versus when he left? It was known mostly for its football team. Uh, it was a small liberal arts Catholic University in Northwest Indiana. Father Ted had, had much bigger dreams for what Notre Dame could become. I think he was really enamored with what education could be, what great education could be, and what it could mean to young people. And he wanted to build a world-class university, and I think that's what he was able to do. He did. Well, thank you, Patrick. We'll be right back with Patrick Creed. Patrick, thank you so much. So, Father Hesburgh, right? I mean, I know we spoke a little bit about some of the adversity he faced. You said some of the students, but it wasn't easy for him. I mean, he has that quote. He says, in faith, there is a meaning in struggle or suffering. It's our test of faith, which I always say personally, my test of faith. Can you tell me about some of the adversity that he overcame and in your own personal life, too? I mean, tell me about some of the things you had to deal with, especially being in this career. I think with Father Ted faced adversity, every day of his life. As a 35-year-old man, he became the president of the University of Notre Dame. It's a lot of responsibility for a 35-year-old. The thing is, he had no idea what was right around the corner for him. He was one of the original members of the Civil Rights Commission. 
Uh, there were only six members. He was one of them. He was 40 when he was asked to serve on that commission. The average age of all the other commissioners was 65. Wow. He's a young man on that commission. He was involved in the student protests, the Vietnam protests. He was involved in immigration in the 80s. The Vatican asked him to be an ambassador to the nuclear non-proliferation talks in the 50s. It kind of goes on and on and on and on, all the stuff he was asked to do. And I think for him, it really, he was able to face adversity with a lot of grace. He took adversity in stride. And I think he was able to do that because he was a man of faith. He had a very, very deep and very profound and very simple faith. He loved Mary. He loved his Catholic upbringing and his Catholic heritage. He absolutely loved the University of Notre Dame. He was honored to serve as their president for 35 years. So in some ways, despite the fact that he was this world traveler and problem solver extraordinaire for 40 or 50 years of his life, he was really kind of a simple man. He was able to face all of that adversity because he was a man of faith and he knew the difference between right and wrong, uh, and he acted accordingly. I think for me personally, when I come up against adversity in my life, I'm very lucky because I, I, have, a, I have a great family. I, I have a great wife who's my producing partner and filmmaking partner, Christine O'Malley. I have three beautiful daughters who keep me on my toes. Um, <laughs> and and I, I, I came from a great family. Uh, a mother and father who supported me in everything I did, um, a brother and two sisters, and a very large extended family. And that's really helped me through difficult times. But I will say, quite frankly, that my Catholic faith um, is not where it used to be. I went to the University of Notre Dame. I graduated in 1989. I loved going to church every Sunday in Dillon Hall at the University of Notre Dame. I loved the community masses at Notre Dame. I, I loved being amongst people who had a really deep faith and a profound faith. And I think like a lot of people of my generation, I've drifted from that. Mm -hmm. I have to say I miss it. And I've never done a film where a subject has rubbed off on me the way this movie has rubbed off on That's me. That's great. As a Catholic, I, I love our Catholic heritage and I love our Catholic traditions. And I'm deeply saddened and disturbed with where we are right now as a faith and as a community. Uh, but I'm also very hopeful. I know that the church is going to get back to where it can be and where it should be. I think like a lot of people who have drifted from the church, I, I miss it. And, and the, working with Father Ted's story for the last two and a half years has, has really made me rethink um, trying to get back to it. And having worked on this film now for the last two and a half years, I definitely feel a calling to get back to my Catholic heritage and my Catholic upbringing because I miss it. And I think in my difficult times, um, that's when I probably need it the most. And you know, it's like I said earlier, I don't believe in coincidence at all. And I don't wanna say I'm positive, but it's probably one of the reasons why you're doing this project. It's probably to bring you back to your faith. I mean, obviously we wanna you know, highlight you know, Father Hesburgh, but it's probably part of your assignment or part of the, you know, God's gift or God's goal that he has for your life is to bring you back to faith. I, I would say you'll you'll see you know over time because I've done documentaries of you that I mean I did one on boxing it didn't rub off on me right yeah, I mean right. I've done them on break dancing and it had no effect on me after the film was done it was I put it on the shelf and I move on but if something rubs off on you this much and it's and it's pulling you and calling you back to your faith there's a reason there's definitely a reason behind that and maybe you'll, maybe not but. Things don't just, I don't believe things just happen. Yeah, I think I, this subject might, you know, maybe it's influencing you to go back to church. I think you might be right about that. And I, and I, and I will just say, like Father Ted, I, I think that, I don't think that any one religion or any one particular faith is, is the right one or the wrong one. I think Father Ted would be the first to say that. I think what Father Ted would encourage people to do though, is to believe that there is a higher power in the world. We may not understand exactly what that is. We may not understand who that is, so to speak. Um, but that knowing that there are forces greater than us uh, is something that can pull you through the, the darkest of times. But I think you're right. I think, I think when people go through difficult times and when I've gone through difficult times, I think having a faith in something bigger than yourself and a higher power, so to speak, is maybe the only thing that can really get you through whatever you're going through. So I do think, you know, I'm, I'm, I just turned 50 recently. Um, Happy birthday. The middle, thank you. I, I, I'm in the middle of my life, so to speak, I hope. And I think this was a great time for me to revisit Father Ted and his legacy. I agree.
And uh, Father Hesburgh, such an amazing man. Can you compare him to, say, a modern-day priest or a public figure? Is there anyone that's that's out there that you would say is similar to yeah. Father Hesburgh? If there's one leader that Father Ted really reminded me of, it's Alexander Hamilton, believe it or not. I mean, they lived two very different times in American history, but they were both called on to do a wide array of, of problem solving. And they were fiercely independent, very different personalities, but they were they were people who knew how to get stuff done and ended up building many of the institutions that we take for granted today. So what are your intentions of the film? Like, what do you hope people walk away with after watching the film, regardless of their faith or their beliefs? I think that we're facing a really important election in 2020. Uh, and I think that as a country, we're looking for maybe a different style of leadership and a different way of building bridges between each other. I hope that's the biggest takeaway with Father Hesburgh. Through his intelligence and his persistence and his kindness, uh, he became one of the great leaders in American history, and I think his story really really resonates right now. There was a quote that I came across. It was, I love it, consumerism, right? You wrote something, it's so rampant that we are addicted to a lifestyle we can't afford and that we save for a rainy day and it's raining. And, you know, society teaches us, right, consumerism accumulates stuff to be materialistic, but we know as Christians that you'll never find true happiness in accumulating stuff, right? There's no happiness in, yeah. in items. How do we let them know that true happiness is not in the accumulation of stuff, but it's in, you know, love is, is very different from what society tells us? You know, I think Father Ted, living as a priest, um, he lived a very simple life. There's actually a shot of him in the movie opening up a can of uh, Campbell's tomato soup for his lunch. He lived a very simple life. He didn't have really a lot of material um, things and stuff. Um, I, I actually visited the room that he lived in. It was a very small dorm room that he lived in on campus at Notre Dame. I think there's, I think Father Ted's life is, is a reminder that, uh, that living a simple life is in some ways maybe living the best kind of life. Patrick, how can people get involved or actually see the film? Is it going to be in theaters? The movie goes nationwide May 3rd. It'll be in 35 cities around, around the country. All the information is on our website, which is hesburgfilm.com. Uh, we spent almost a year putting together just the release of the film, to say nothing of making the film. Um, and we did that for a reason. This is a movie that you should see with people that you love. It's also a movie that you should see with people that you don't necessarily see eye to eye with. This is the kind of film that is best seen with a group of people who you can get together with afterwards and have a conversation with. I Maybe like have this. a beer with. This would be a great film too for parishes. A lot of parishes Definitely. they rent movie theaters now. Absolutely. We do a lot of that throughout the diocese. This would be a great film for you know for different parishes or churches to come and maybe sponsor a screen for you. Yeah, we're actually doing that already, and you can get that information on hesburghfilm.com. It's actually really simple. You just click on um, group sales and click to us and go through. One hundred percent of the profits of the film are going to charity. Uh, there's two charities. One was picked by the Hesburgh family. One was picked by the Holy Cross congregation. Wow. Um, none of the money is going to the University of Notre Dame, which everyone agreed was a good idea. I think that would be a conflict, yes. a journalistic conflict, if they received any profit from this film. Um, but yeah, the movie is, is going to be out there far and wide. And I really encourage people to go see it. It's a very emotional experience. And it's even better seeing it with someone that you love or someone that you frankly need to reconnect with. And now if you were watching the movie with Father Hesburgh, what would his reaction be? Would he be happy? Oh, would he I, say, why oh, would you do this? What do you think he would say to you? You know, the nice thing about me and my team making this film is that um, there were 19 Notre Dame students or alums that worked on the film. At the same time, I, as the director, I demanded that the film was done independently, journalistically, uh, with journalistic integrity. It's not a puff piece. It's a hard-hitting film about a great man. And he absolutely stands up to our scrutiny all these years later. I think he'd be proud of the work that his students did in telling this story. It, it is a big story. It's kind of an American story. It's not so much a Notre Dame story. It's not really so much a Catholic story. Mm -hmm. It's a story about America, and it's a story about one of America's great problem solvers and I think that Father Ted would be really happy with it. I know his family is, and that means a lot to me. I think it was a great film. Thank Patrick, you. Patrick, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Craig. Anytime you want to go to church, I'll take you. Okay, right. terrific. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks. Thanks to the crew. You guys are great. Thank you, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Walk in Faith. Always remember, you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through your words and actions. Till next time.